It didn't start when I loaded my gun, or when I left camp. It didn't even really start when I got off the plane or when I boarded it for that matter. This hunt started long ago, before I was even a part of the picture here at Weatherby. It started with my grandfather, developing cartridges and taking them in the wild to test them and his guns and even himself against the best that nature could throw at them. I needed to be ready. So did the 65300, the first new round that I helped develop here at Weatherby, and the new Mark V, a refinement of the legendary rifle that my grandfather pioneered decades ago. I mean, you can dream and design and test and train, but we aren't in the business of guesswork. I wanted to find my limits and discover what lay beyond them. Honestly, I felt like I was ready. I trusted my equipment. I trusted my preparation. And while I may have had tags for sheep and caribou in Canada's untamed North Country, in reality, I was hunting for proof. The mountains take a hold of you with their elements and they isolate you in their wild. The days are long, and the nights, they're lonely. But when you're there, you can be nowhere else. At first, I mean, this is a challenge. I'm a hunter, but I'm also a father, and a husband, a pastor, an executive, and a member of a community. So time to me is a resource, something that is saved and spent as a currency. It is cherished by me and demanded by others. And as a necessity, it's almost never free. But here, time could not be spent. It had to be given. Living my life, I, I value productivity, but I had to break its connection to my time to find the success and serenity that I came here for. I had to work to disconnect, but when I did, I felt free to think about nowhere but here, no time but now, and nobody but him. While God is always present in my life, it was here, looking over some of his most beautiful creation, that I felt a closeness fill the silence that is so rare in our modern lives. It was peace with a purpose. My senses were heightened, my heart was full, the hunt was underway. But though I glassed for hours, it was not through optics that I found a way to see. I felt the burn in my lungs and the strain in my legs as my boots spent their tread in the sharp virgin rock that only hooves and paws had traveled before. I hurt, but I was happy. Good things did not come to those unwilling to pay a price. And I was ready to spend whatever it took to settle my crosshairs on an animal here. With every step, my respect for the creatures that survived in this unforgiving world grew. It was evident that to scrape a life from these peaks and valleys, and to keep it from the teeth of the predators that shared these wilds, no ram or bull could reach maturity by chance alone. They were wary and scarce, but even once I found a bull I knew was right, I didn't know that I could bring myself to shoot it yet. I was here to test myself, and a rifle, and the cartridge, and to do that, I had to kill. Killing, however, ended more than just a life. I knew it would end this part of my journey and finish a chapter that I wasn't sure I was done writing yet. The days of work and the nights of dreaming, they were all spent to get here, but I had more to give. Passing an opportunity like this has always been a difficult thing for me, but a trophy is much more than an animal. For me, it's not just the arrival of a bullet that defines a trophy, but the journey I took to get it there. So moving on from that bull, I knew there was more to see, more to climb and glass. But as I left, I knew that if I found him again, I'd be ready.
There are formulas to calculate ballistics, tests to showcase accuracy, models to predict cardiovascular performance, endurance, and lactic acid buildup. But in all the world of science, there is nothing that can measure how this felt. Success. Not a success that can be quantified by anyone other than he who enjoys it, but one that is personal. The same success that was felt by my father before me and his father before him. The squeeze of a trigger, the report of a rifle, and the echo of validation as we finally put our name to the rifle and the caliber that we'd developed. Tradition has always been important to me, but the emotions overwhelmed me as I laid hands upon the velvet of the bull's antlers. My mind raced through the photos I have seen and the stories I've been told of buffalo in the plains of Africa, bears in the forests of Alaska, and other game taken by my forebears with the firearms that made our family name known. Now this bull, the 65300, and our story would join them. The rain lashed relentlessly down at the side of the mountain, and it felt as though it was trying to wash all life from the slopes. There was nowhere to hide, and although that was true for me, it was also true for the sheep. So I pressed on. There's a focus that comes from being pounded by the elements, and the misery of the downpour only made it sweeter when finally, I laid eyes upon the first band of white rams in the distance. Even from afar, there's this self-awareness that these sheep have, a sense of royalty that is obvious even through water-spotted optics. I had long dreamt of laying my hands on the weathered curls of these lords of the north, but I felt it stronger now than ever. As light faded on the day, I knew that no matter what it took to close the distance on one of those rams, it would be worth it. I'd trained for this terrain. Our team had developed equipment for those conditions, but finishing the job was up to me. Never in my life had crosshairs shown up better than then. Months of anticipation suddenly leapt into focus and I found myself steadying my breathing, trying to subdue my racing heart, and finally squeezing the trigger. We have moments in our lives that define us. This was one of those for me. The world around us disappeared, and there was nothing but me and the ram. Much more than the horns and meat he carried, I finally recognized that this was my destination. I think for everybody, they have different dream hunts. For me, this is a dream hunt. I'm in my element, um, being put to the test physically, I don't know, just enduring everything, being up here with this sheep. For some, it may be Africa. Um, you know, for, for me, this is, this is it. So to be able to test a new cartridge out here, you know, much like my grandfather did in Africa, is really a dream come true. It's pretty surreal to be here, honestly. I traveled north in search of trial and adventure, and I left with a desire for more. The meat I bring back to my family, and the results I bring back to my company. But in exchange, 
I left a part of myself there to wander in the rugged tranquility of his creation, forever witness to the miracles of God. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game.